Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is an honor and a pleasure for me to welcome you to the AI Expo Africa 2021. A great divide. Artificial intelligence has created a kind of a great divide. It solicits strong reactions from people across the board. You mentioned the phrase artificial intelligence and the next question that gets asked is uh, are you for or are you against artificial intelligence? And we have a great divide, those who swear and support AI and those who are worried about it and its uh, implications on human lives. Those who are for AI, they state some of the light side of AI. As an example, back in 2019, when the managers of a hotel in Japan had to fire half of the 240 odd robots that were hired. The robots jobs um, entailed concierge and uh, uh, bell hopping. They were hired and put in, uh, guest, in guest rooms. And unfortunately, some of them kept um, hitting against the wall, some of them falling on stairs. And one specific one, unfortunately, kept on waking up the guest every time they snored with the, with the phrase, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. You want to say it again? Those who support it also talk about the key benefits of AI, like in healthcare, where you can have early diagnosis. Those who are against the AI state some of the dangers of AI. They state as an example, uh, back in 2018, when a, when a driverless Uber hit and killed a woman in Arizona. They also state the dangers of AI, an autonomous weapon, and therefore a potential AI um, war arms race. It is very easy, very easy to, to assume that those who support artificial intelligence um, like technology for the sake of technology and are unaware of the, of the detrimental impact it can, have, it can have on human lives. That's not correct because the benefits of AI to human development cannot be ignored. Equally, it is very easy to classify those who are against AI to be on the fringes and maybe don't quite understand AI. Not quite. The dangers that they allude to are real. And some of the people who are deeply worried about AI work intimately with AI. For me, the question, are you for or are you against AI is incon inconsequential. When you invent a car, as a consequence, you also invent car accidents. We celebrate the benefits of the mode of this transport, but we also put safety technologies in the car and legislations to make sure that we safeguard human lives and indeed all lives. Therefore, some of the questions that to me are appropriate are the following. Is South Africa ready for an AI driven world? How will AI disrupt the way we live, learn and work? And lastly, what should we consider when we craft a path for an AI driven future? So the first question, is South Africa ready for AI driven world? AI has moved from a, from a province of those who dabble with the bleeding edge technology and those who love technology for its sake to be adopted by organizations around the world to solve real business problems. It is growing in popularity and it is core to what we call the fourth industrial revolution. A study by Accenture estimates that uh, AI will create market 
worth about uh, 35 billion US dollars in 2025. And it's growing at the rate double the world economic growth rate. And what we are seeing, it's a future of people and robots working together, working side by side, armed with near unlimited processing and algorithmic power. So the impact of AI is real. Yes, all of these are worldwide examples. But what about us? Many people state that South Africa faces two realities that uh, at the minimum will inhibit the adoption of AI, but also that we need to consider that when we want to talk about AI in a country. As an example, in the country, a number of companies find themselves encumbered by legacy technologies and systems. That is on one hand. And on the other hand, they find themselves with a workforce that may not be ready for AI revolution. These are some of the, the issues that are being raised, but the truth is that these issues are not unique to South Africa. Every country faces that. Yes, what we should be worried about is that uh, we have high unemployment rate and therefore the concern that AI will eliminate jobs and when, when Western inequality are absolutely correct. So this, this, this concerns are real, but South Africa cannot afford to ignore or be a laggard when it comes to adopting this technology. Some organizations have implemented AI with great benefits. The automotive industry in South Africa has been doing this for a long time with great, great benefits. But it is clear that our country and our ability to compete in the world driven by AI need to be considered. It needs to be examined. I will touch a little bit on this later and a number of speakers will talk about how we need to think about that in the context of the challenges that we have as a country. So how will AI impact the way we live, learn and work? The obvious one is that AI will impact jobs. That's one thing that people state, and that is correct. It is true that AI will replace humans in jobs that are suited for robots. As an example, uh, repetitive jobs, those are the first ones that will be taken over by robots. However, there is no question that humans will continue to create, to create value long after AI has changed the economy. That will remain. It is unlikely that robots will totally replace human beings and unlikely that robots will replace what, is, what are unique individual intangibles, intangible skills. Whilst yes, there might be a, a negative impact on some jobs in the short term, there is no question that over time will create new types of jobs and opportunities for people to monetize their skills. This part is inevitable. There's another thing that we need to consider. Unlike in the past, where new technologies were localized in few large countries, because of critical mass and the funding, increasingly we find open source version of AI and funding across the world and here in South Africa. This is helping to ensure that we are key participants in, the, in the, this technology and that the economic benefits do not only accrue to wealthy countries. For the first time, technology is not dependent on a location. And maybe a little bit on the lighter side, maybe technology or AI rather is likely to make us human, human again. So yes, AI will remove the need for people to perform repetitive jobs or tasks. In some cases, it will, be, it will communicate on our behalf. 
and therefore will have this freedom to step away from computers and engage in real world interactions. So on the lighter side, AI will make us humans again. So what about telecom and BCX? Are there examples of us implementing artificial intelligence? The answer is yes. And I'll give you two examples. The first one, it's the development and implementation of AI ops, the automation of IT service provisioning. As more and more companies transform themselves digitally, and as more and more of them migrate towards software-defined enterprises, the health of the IT operations becomes fundamental. BCX developed AI, developed AI ops to do exactly that. AI ops combines automation on one side and IT service management to transform IT operations, achieving greater business, customer, and employee experience. It drastically reduces the time to know, that is to find out, to determine the root cause of the problem and remediate the problems with corrective actions and workflows, and therefore lower the problem, uh, lower the cost for problem resolution. This part is handled by uh, machine learning that work, ne that work next, next, next to our human beings. Another example is BCX Ponder, an AI-driven contact center that leverages um, speech to text models and deals with different accents and languages in South Africa. This is being tested in the market and it will help to revolutionize how contact centers work with people in South Africa. Those are the two great examples of AI in the telecom group. Over and above the examples above from the telecom group, what COVID has done is to accelerate an adoption of AI by a number of companies in South Africa. And those uh, brought great benefits for South Africans. You probably have heard of Kuro that has added biometric COVID monitoring and predictive analyt analytics to its wearable uh, called hospital at home. And this they, they did to make sure that uh, they can uh, provide rapid response for those who show symptoms of COVID. Or you will have heard of uh, an organization called uh, Let Me In. It is a simple, at least it's a simple visitor access management uh, company using WhatsApp and other uh, messaging apps. But what they did is they launched a chatbot and a web-enabled QR scanning app called Corona Fighter. And this was to screen and track symbols, symptoms of uh, COVID-19 in the workplace. So a number of companies in South Africa have taken advantage of uh, the, the, the crisis and created solutions for the country. So overall, AI is helping to give benefits to people in South Africa. So how do we forge a path ahead as a country? It is clear that the opportunities of AI-driven world promise great benefits for people and yes, they also have downsides. In my view, there are two things to consider. The first one is a creation of a vibrant ecosystem. If South Africa is to become a key player in the AI-driven world, then a vibrant ecosystem must be created. The vibrant ecosystem is made up of five pillars. The first pillar is the universities and the research institutions. They are to be the seedbed for AI and provide environment for leading scientists and engineers to develop ideas. The second pillar, it is the startups. It is important for us to have a startup community to incubate and nurture 
AI ideas. The third pillar is large organizations. They are important to scale and mature and mature AI ideas. And of course, we require policymakers as the fourth pillar. They are required to create an environment, an enabling environment for AI to thrive. Last but not least, we require funders and the general public to have input as to what problems AI should be solving. The second point, as we craft a path to AI, we need to practice responsible artificial intelligence. As I said, some of the challenges that are facing South Africa in terms of AI are not unique to us. However, we do have unique situations and we need to take that into account. But as AI becomes more deeply integrated into our lives, then intellectual, technological, political, ethical, and social questions will arise. On one hand, organizations need to prepare their workforce for the AI future, training their employees on how to effectively work with machines. On the other hand, train machines on how to effectively work with uh, human beings. But I think more importantly, it is imperative for policymakers to be more proactive and they are preempt the downside of AI. They must identify the groups that are at risk of being disproportionately affected with job displace displacement that are brought by AI and create strategies on how to focus on them and integrate them back into an AI driven economy. The time is running out and the policymakers must act proactively. And of course, there are ethical side of how we should, as an example, um, get driverless cars algorithm to decide on how to value uh, one person's lives over another. Or as an example, what happens when robots analyze med medical scans make an error? Or how do we appropriately apportion accountability? Those are the questions that uh, um, the policymakers must take seriously and work and create that environment that will enable us to have a thriving artificial intelligence. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing, to prepare South Africa for a successful future with AI, policymakers must clear the path. They must prepare the next generation because we need more and more people understanding AI. They must address the redistribution effect of AI. They must advocate a strong code of ethics. They must prioritize infrastructure investment and barriers. And they must foster a collaborative ecosystem that will make South Africa a key player in the AI driven world. Lastly, what about business people? Business leaders need to integrate AI into their strategies. They need to create a new playbook that empowers people to do what they do best with technology. And that is to imagine, to innovate, and create. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And now you, I, I wish you a great expo. Thank you.